Well, we need to read Galatians. I mean, and this envy is actually a deed of the flesh. Peter was far less educated than Paul. Paul was able to present certain kinds of apologetic argumentation and certain kinds of representations to the Greco-Roman world and to the rabbinic authorities that Peter could not. But Peter says that our brother Paul explains these complicated things, and that was according to the grace that God gave Paul. It's all God's grace. Peter had no resentment of Paul, yet Paul had no resentment of Peter. Paul persecuted the church. He was not around from the time of Jesus or the baptism of John the Baptist initially. He said he was least of the apostles, but he knew it was only God's grace. He had no resentment of Peter, and Peter had none of Paul. It's all grace. We have nothing that we haven't received. Never be jealous of the ministry of another. It's only God's grace to them. What we need to do is concentrate on God's grace to us and be faithful to Jesus within that. You know, an evangelist who leads 50,000 people to Christ, preaching in open-air meetings or public venues, God bless him. Thank God for the 50,000 people that he led to Christ. May they stay faithful. May they become disciples. Thank God for that evangelist. Thank God for his ministry. May God continue to bless and use him. May there be 50,000 and 150,000 more, and then more beyond that. But an evangelist or a missionary in Saudi Arabia, true story, after over 30 years, led five people to Christ. Under his circumstances, those five people those five? In God's sight, that's 50,000. In Philadelphia or in the English Midlands or in Australia, it's all God's grace. It's faithfulness to what we are called to do. Never be envious of the ministry of another. It's only God's grace. Concentrate on what God has called you to do. Be faithful to what he's called you to do in your circumstances. That's the only thing that's going to matter when the rewards are handed out. Not fame, not numbers, not success as the world judges success. Faithfulness to Jesus. Always remember, after many, many years of preaching, seven people were saved at the preaching of Noah and they were all related to him. Was he successful? By God's standards, yes, because he was faithful. Another problem with envy is it perverts our motive. Our motive should be love of the Lord and love of others with the love of the Lord. Our motive should be doing his will because we love him and because he loves us. He delights to use us. That should be our motive, pleasing the Lord, doing his will and loving others with his love. That should be your motive. When you get into envy, this competition gets into your thinking. Who has the bigger church? Who has the bigger ministry? This is the mentality of the world. Now, God is a God of salvation. He's in the business of saving souls. He will even use messengers that are not good messengers simply because they still have the right message, the gospel. Up to a point, he can still use people like that, not because of them, but because of the unsaved, the lost he's trying to reach. But the fruit of the Spirit won't be there. When you have this envy and this competition coming in as a motive, and it becomes two businessmen competing with each other, for who has the biggest ministry or the biggest church or the most numbers, this is absolutely wrong. This is not Jesus. Now, if we're not preaching effectively, if we're not going out to the highways and byways as we weren't warned before, that's not being faithful. That's being religious or being silly or being naive or being impractical. But if we're being faithful, God is responsible for the results and people are responsible for responding to the truth when they hear it. We are responsible to do what the Lord told us to do. Be faithful to him. 
There are Sunday school teachers who had a tremendous impact on Christian children when they're very young, five, six, seven. But those seeds planted in the hearts of those children by those Sunday school teachers bore fruit 40, 50, 60 years later and more. But it went back to what was planted in their heart that the Lord put there through the ministry of the Sunday school teacher when they were little kids. Only when we get to heaven are all of these things going to be as clear as, as, as we'd like them to be. In the meantime, there's no time for envy, let alone place for it. Get on with what Jesus is calling you to do. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you so much. Blessings to your friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering it at the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print the Morial catalog on the Morial website, morial.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo. What the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Memorial Catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.